gas exchange in plants happens through these tiny little pores uh, in the leaves, most of them on the underside of the leaves called stomata. The gases move in and out of these stomata via the process of diffusion. Remember that process, the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide enters the leaf and oxygen exits the leaf overall as a net gas exchange. And during respiration, oxygen enters the leaf and carbon dioxide exits the leaf if it's doing more respiration than it is photosynthesis. Now, Respiration and photosynthesis are equal and opposite equations. So if they were doing the same amounts of each reaction, then there wouldn't be really any gas exchange at all. But that's not the case in plants. What they do is actually respire 24 hours a day, but at a very sort of low level. And then when the sun is out, they do loads and loads of photosynthesis. So when the sun is out, the net exchange of gases is going to be in favour of photosynthesis. And when it's dark, the net gas ex uh, exchange of gases will be in favour of respiration. You can represent that much more easily on this graph to be able to show how that will happen. And therefore, thinking about what time of day it is, you'll be able to work out which gases would be wanting to come in and which gases would be wanting to go out. Leaves are really well adapted for gas exchange. They've got a nice, big, broad, large surface area for diffusion. Really, really thin. So again, gases diffuse really, really quickly. Lots of air spaces within the spongy mesophyll layer, really good for diffusion. Loads of stomata, so lots of points for gases to come in and out. And actually the stomata can be open and closed depending on the conditions, uh, which is also another advantage for gas exchange. You need to know a practical to do with this topic, which is basically being able to investigate the effect of light on the net gas exchange in a plant. Now, it's already been mentioned elsewhere in the course, if you've watched some of the other videos, but there's a very important indicator called hydrogen carbonate indicator, which you can use to measure CO2 levels. Um, you can put aquatic plants directly into hydrogen carbonate indicator uh, to see what happens. Hydrogen carbonate indicator, which has had lots of CO2 bubbled through it, should be really, really yellow. And then as the plant uses up more and more of that CO2, it should go sort of yellow to orange to purple. Um, and so that's the kind of color change you are looking for, depending on how much CO2 there is. So you can set up experiments such as this, where maybe you've got four tubes, three with leaves in and one as a control tube. And you put the same volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator into each tube. And then you can expose them to different light intensities. You could wrap one in aluminum foil. You could wrap the other one in muslin, which is going to let a little bit of light through. And you could leave one completely exposed to light. And then you could shine light on them for about 45 minutes. Now you should be able to predict these results. What you'd expect to see is the one with foil on the hydrogen carbonate indicator would go yellow because doing uh, no photosynthesis at all, so but still doing respiration, because remember it's respiring 24 hours a day, so actually it's going to be producing some CO2. So that's it's actually going to go more towards the yellow end of the uh, colour spectrum for the hydrogen carbonate indicator. The one with muslin on, well, it's getting a bit of light in, but not very much. It's probably doing about an equal amount of photosynthesis and respiration, so we're not expecting any colour change, no difference in CO2. The one with no carbon at all, though, it is going to be using up all the CO2 inside that tube for photosynthesis, so it has gone um, very, very purple. Have a go at these 10 true or false questions to see if you really understand this topic well.